Now, what happened? Have you got any idea of what happened? Matt, it's important. Do you remember how you came to be outside? Dad. Matt, this is Dr. Lyle. He helped me carry you in. Now, it's very important that you tell him what happened. Watch this, will you, man? Follow it all the way. That's it. Now, all the way back again. Good. I don't think there's anything permanently wrong with you, young man. But I'll look back in the morning just to be sure. Thank you, Doctor. Dad, what, what? happened? Oh, that's what I want to know, old boy. 
And what were you doing down here? You were supposed to have been in bed. It was Di. Well, go on. He... I came down and I heard this ch chanting sound. Yes, but go on, Matt. Then... I don't know. I was flung against a stone and as I touched it, I felt this terrible pain. Like an electric shock? Yes. Hmm. What then? I don't remember. I really don't. It's important he gets a good night's sleep. See that he takes these. Right. right. Matthew, your father found you on the doorstep. Did you fall, can you remember? Uh, that's a nasty bump you got on your head there. You really ought to try and find out how you came by it. I'm afraid I can't help. Ah, oh, well, relax. But if you'll take my advice, Matthew, you won't go rushing around in the middle of the night again. Next time it might be something worse than concussion. Thank you for your help, Doctor. Oh, I'm only too glad of the exercise. These villagers, they're all so damned healthy. I never get a call. <laughs> I came here for semi-retirement after a heart attack, but I didn't expect to be totally ignored. <laughs> well, we'll keep you busy for a couple of days. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you, Mrs. Crabtree. That smells delicious. Yes? The boy. Who is he? He's going to be all right. Good. Hey! Wait a minute! Oh, morning, Matt. How do you feel? It was Di. Some man wanted to know how yes, you were. Yes, it was Di. Well, who's Di? He said he was a friend. <sighs> Sit. Now, do you want to eat? Please. Was he the man that tied the handkerchief around your head? Could have been, Dad. I told you. The last thing I remember was those people standing in a circle. Hmm. Mrs. Crabtree? Yes, sir? One invalid breakfast, please. Poor dear. How do you feel? Matt, Mrs. Crabtree asked you how you felt. All right. Bit of the head. I'm not surprised. It's odd stuff, Stone. Which stone? The doorstep. That's where you fell, wasn't it? Was it? Well, what would you like, then? Some nice scrambled egg? Yes, anything. That wasn't very polite. She was there, Dad, part of the circle. Are you sure? You sure didn't dream it? You found me on the doorstep. Did you dream that? You could have been sleepwalking. You don't understand. It happened, just as I said. And the painting coming to life, did that happen too? Yes. Right. And don't get upset. I mean, what you saw is probably some traditional local ceremony. I mean, lots of villages around here have ancient rites and rituals that they perpetuate, even though their origins are totally lost. You don't understand, Dad. It wasn't just a Morris dance or a village sing-song. The people in the circle were... I don't know... possessed. Hi. Hi. I want to ask you something. Happy day. Not here. What's that all about? New people having to stick together. What do you mean? You said that when we first met. Oh, well, we do. Okay, why? For protection. Protection? Protection against what? Oh, I don't know, really. You told Kevin I must be human because I'd only just arrived. That's right. So after people have been here for a while, they aren't human anymore, like those children in there? Yes, something seems to happen to them. I don't know what it is, but something seems to happen. They change. Oh, you must have noticed. Some of us are normal and the rest are happy ones. Yes. But they don't seem happy. Oh, I know. They always behave well. Never lose their tempers. Always shine in class. But they're like... Zombies. Yes. Robots. Puppets. Come on, we better go. There's a man called Di. Do you know him? The poacher. He's potty, I think. Always trying to warn me. Telling me to be careful. 
He told me if I ever needed sanctuary, I could go to him for help. No! If we ever need help, we should go to the sanctuary. The sanctuary, of course. <laughs> Lynette Barrow, Di lives there. How far is it? At the end of the avenue. Outside the circle? Well, it's outside the village, I suppose. But it's still... Well, it's still within the stones, though it's not really inside the circle. It's like some terrible nightmare. It's having a traumatic effect on Matt. Could it be Milbury, as it was? Well, why not? I mean, there's certainly an uncanny resemblance. The stones, the hill. Yes. There are less stones in the picture, of course. The incomplete circle. But there's the avenue leading to the sanctuary. The head of the solar serpent. Well, certainly could be Milbury. So if the subject is real, it's likely the story it tells has some real significance. It's a reasonable assumption. The question is what? A brilliant source of light that appears to have the power to turn people to stone? And a man and a boy escaping towards the sanctuary? Some pagan superstition, perhaps. Beginning as a ritual and ending as... It's terrifying. <laughs> We're lucky we live in this century. Oh, I don't know. There's a lot we don't understand. Uh, Matthew said he saw a ring of people holding hands. That echoes the painting again. I suppose he could have dreamt it, but he seemed very sure. A ring of people holding hands. Mm. I didn't know they did that here. Did what? Well, it's known as clipping the church. The parishioners clasp hands and walk round it in a clockwise direction with the sun, and then advance and retreat three times. It's an old custom, something to do with renewing one's faith by binding minds and souls together. But it doesn't make sense here. Why not here? Well, the church is deconsecrated. It's in the gift of the manor and hasn't had an incumbent for years. Yes, but according to Matthew, those people were nowhere near the church. Milbury and to the school and it may be some time before you're able to move to the high table with the others in the meantime I thought a little extra work would do you no harm although I'm as sorry as you are that it will cut into the weekend that's why I was dropped from the football it's her fault this for instance is the standard you will eventually attain <laughs> this is the weekend prep for the rest of the class no good asking if any of you could attempt to prove it please miss yes Jimmy that be a special case of a Hilbert transform, miss. Splendid. Now, would you like to show us your proof? We're going to have to make room for Jim over the table, aren't we? It seems you've finally made the breakthrough at last. Extraordinary good or extraordinary bad? Hang on a minute. Kevin. Stone acting as a magnet? Well, it's not possible. How much do you know about magnetic fields? Well, teach me, Professor. I know the Earth has one. So do rocks. 
Normally, the Earth's magnetic field is in alignment with that of the rocks at the time the stratum was formed. And these aren't? No, these are in alignment with the Earth's present magnetic field. Which means? Which means there's only one possible solution. Some tremendous energy has passed through these stones very recently. I don't get it. Yesterday, Dum Dum. Today's doing tricks on the blackboard. Mm. What happened in between? Same that happened to the rest of them. <laughs> What's that? Whatever it is, I don't want it to happen to me. What about Bright Boy here? If he gets a treatment, he'll make Einstein look like a no no, <laughs> won't you? <laughs> treatment? Is that what you think Jimmo got? Some kind of treatment? Don't ask. If it is a treatment, who gives it? And why? We'll just have to wait and see. What do you mean? It's obvious. There's only us three left. It's just a question of who's next. Mm. Then we must stick together, compare notes whenever we can. Then no one can take us by surprise. Right. <gasps> Die. It had to be done. What? A shock treatment. They had to get away from there. Danger, you see. Dangerous it was. So it was you. You are saviour, I am. Save me from what? The past. Aye. The past, that's what it was. My past. And your future. I don't understand. I let you into the secret, boy, and neither do I. Dai, you do understand. You understand something which is more than we do. I've got feelings. That's quite different from understanding. What do you feel? What do I feel? I feel... haunted. <laughs> no, not ghosts than that. Something happened here in the past, and... It's happening again today. Bogey, bogey! Any idea what? Everyone turned to stone. Go on. Go on, boy. Explain yourself. I have a picture, a very old painting. It's of Milbury. It shows people turn into stone. You mean all those stones out there might be people? Petrified. It's more complicated than that. Let go. Let go. Maze it is. And at the centre, treasure. Treasure? Trouble is this danger too. What kind of danger? If I knew that, we could avoid it, couldn't we? But we can't. You say there's treasure here. What treasure? The most priceless treasure of all. Hmm? Knowledge. Hmm. Knowledge? <laughs> you make of that. What is it? Where did you get it? It's mine. I found it. It came to me. My father would be interested in that. Dad? It's more in your mum's line, isn't it? Yes. Shall I show it to her? To my mother? It's mine. I found it. It came to me. Dad, we won't take it. We'll make a tracing. Yes. That's what we'll do. We'll copy it. Yes, like a brass rubbing. I'll get the stuff. Good return. Key. Yes. What it is. My key. The original's made of clay, you say? Mm. Either that or some kind of stone. It looked very old. Yes. A snake? A serpent? A cobra? What's the difference? They'll give me the shudders. A serpent's bigger and more powerful. It's also a symbol. A symbol of what? Well, it was originally the guardian of knowledge, but later serpents were supposed to protect sacred hills and mazes. Di knew that. He said something about the village being like a maze, with treasure at the centre. And the treasure was knowledge. Di? Well, how did he know? He didn't know, Mum. He just felt it. And the danger in the maze may have been this yucky snake thing. Oh, yes, of course. Di's feelings are remarkably accurate. This symbol has a special significance here. The church. There's a carving of a serpent on the font. <laughs> it's biting the foot of a bishop. And I told you what that meant, remember? Mm. It represents the battle between pagan and Christian. Yes, that's right. You see, after the battle was over, the Christians built their churches on the sites of pagan temples. I mean, ground that was already sacred. But they couldn't be absolutely sure that the ancient religion had been completely stamped out. So the carving on the font was probably intended as a warning. A warning? Yes, to be constantly on their guard. Against the power of the serpent. That's right. Then this thing of dies, whatever it is, 
is pagan. Oh, there's no doubt about that. Some sort of amulet to keep the owner from harm, perhaps. I'd love to see the original. Could you get it for me? Adam! Oh, Mr. Hendrick. I've been looking for you. Me? Why? What have I done? First things first. What will you have? No, no, let me, please. Uh, two large whiskeys. Yes. Right. I was told there was a telegram for you. Oh. I promised to deliver it. Oh, thank you. Uh, will you excuse oh. me? Not bad news, I hope. No, no, it's from California. Mount Palomar Observatory. They're doing some research for me. It's in reply to a telegram of my own. Research about Milbury? Yes. Well, I wondered what the stones of the circle were all pointing at up there. And as far as I could work out, they formed no alignment with the sun or the moon or any of the other major planets or stars. It just didn't seem to make sense. But now it does. In a way, yes. According to this, it's aligned to a supernova which exploded centuries before Christ, about the start of our existence. There's nothing there now but a black hole. That's a huge mass of imploding energy. I could have told you that. Thank you, sir. Oh, let's go and sit down. What do you know about the supernova? <laughs> it's unfair. I should have introduced myself properly when we first met. Of course. Hendrick Supernova. You discovered the black hole. Raphael Hendrick, the astronomer. The ex-astronomer. I resigned my chair in Cambridge five years ago. Yes, I always wondered why. Because of some papers, I suppose. May I ask what papers? They were given to me by a colleague, written in dog Latin, in a style earlier than Bede's, about sixth century. A mishmash of fact and fiction about megalithic Britain. <laughs> Legends and stories handed down through the centuries, which the author had picked up. No one had ever paid much account to them. I like so much of that stuff in the Ashmolean. <laughs> None of the stories were authenticated, but um, there was one event which, because of my discovery of the black hole, made me sit up and take notice. What was that? Someone in the village, Wheel Wicker, as it was then called, was reported by bardic tradition as having seen a star explode. So that's why you settled in Milbury, because somebody had actually witnessed the beginning of the black hole. It was like coming home. Even though there's nothing there? The black hole's there. Gravitational force is so powerful they're beyond our comprehension. <laughs> no, I, I meant nothing we can see. Well, that's what's so intriguing, don't you think? To know it's there and yet not be able to see it. <laughs> I'm afraid at the moment my interests are more earthbound. You know which constellation it's in? Yes, sir, Major. The Great Bear. And you know for early man the bear was a, an object of veneration. The bear cult is probably as old as any other religion. Are well, you suggesting it was started by the primitive cave dweller who saw your supernova explode? Primitive cave dweller. I think you do him an injustice. According to legend, he was a visionary, a spiritual leader, a man of destiny. <laughs> I beg his pardon. I think you might be well advised to do so. It's not all that serious, is it? You see that man there? The one with the white hair? Yes. That's Tom Browning. The farmer invited Dr. Lyle and me for supper the night we were all newcomers, remember? I remember. I know Mr. Browning. He's Jimmo's father. Well, it's the first time he's taken part in one of these occasions. It's so unlike him. And he was so contemptuous of them. He said they were an anachronism, a complete waste of time. Well, he's obviously changed his mind. He's having the time of his life. Oh. Uh. 